What is up people, welcome back to Blue Chip Prospect for another scouting report. Today we are going to take a deep dive into Ivan Demidov's game. So without further ado, let's get this thing started right away. So first thing first, Ivan Demidov is a 5'11", 168 pounds left shot right winger. He's 18 years old, he's born on December 10th, so a little bit on the older side. In terms of rankings, mostly in the top 5 everywhere, pretty much everywhere outside of maybe Bob McKenzie who had him at number 6, but most people have him at number 2, number 3 or number 4, so pretty consistent overall. In terms of stats, he has 60 points, 23 goals in 30 games at the MHL level, and right now in the playoff he has 16 points, 6 goals in 8 games. What does it mean in terms of production is that he basically dominated the MHL with 2 points per game, he's even over other players that were drafted like 2 years ago like Gleb Jukozov. Also, no one has ever produced at that pace of 2 points per game, but the thing is that most other prospect or high-end prospect don't usually play in the MHL in their draft year, they're more likely to play in the VHL or KHL, but for example, other highly touted prospect like let's say Nikita Kucherov was producing at 1.41 points per game, other players like Danila Yurov who's right now destroying the KHL was producing at a 1.57 point per game, so basically no other highly touted prospect ever produced like he does. Then there's also the fact that if we take his draft minus one season, he's second ever behind only Mishkov. So if we want, if we wanted to compare him to Matvey Mishkov in terms of production, then we can take his draft minus one and see that he was at 1.45 point per game while Mishkov was at 1.82. So it's behind Mishkov by a pretty wide gap, but he's still in front of players like Yurov, Kucherov, Chernyshov, Buchnevich, or even next year top's prospect Ivan Ryabkin. I wasn't. Sure how to grade his shot but I settled at an above average shot with him. He's one of those players where I wish that category was called scoring instead of shooting because he's basically a high-end scorer without being a high-end shooter. But to me it's clear that his main strength are the handling, the passing and the awareness and maybe to a certain extent the competitiveness. He's a good shooter, he's a decent skater, he competes very well but his game revolves around his puck skills and hockey sense more than anything else. Before we turn on the clips, please take the time to go like and subscribe if you like what I do and especially if you like to come back to watch your favorite prospects, it helps me grow the channel and reach more people who could be interested in this type of content so please like and subscribe. Also if you're interested, I'm basically taking my video content and make it into articles on my brand new website, I also try to stay as close as possible to what I said in these videos so if you want to come back to some info about a player, you can just go on the website, click the player, find the section you were looking for since it's separated by attributes just like the vids and get the info you wanted just like that. It's pretty much fantastic. So the website is thebluechipprospect.com if you want to go take a look. Alright, enough chit chatting, let's roll the clips. When it comes to his skating mechanics and posture, I think there's definitely some work to be done there. He looks a little bit like Benson looked last year when he's skating in a straight line but probably with a wider base. There's no world where he looks like a beautiful skater. <laughs> he's hunched over and he often looked pretty slow actually but I don't necessarily think he's slow. I think he's gonna need an additional gear or two to take full advantage of his potential in the NHL though. But outside of speed and posture, he's a pretty powerful skater and he's very strong on his skate. He can drive to the middle or cut to the net using his powerful edges and he can work through traffic without a bump. Even when defenders try to push him or check him, he stays strong on his skate and gets out of contact without any issues. He's also a very very agile skater using combination of crossovers and mohawk stride to navigate the offensive zone. He's extremely strong on his inside edges and often look like he's playing at the very limit of its Grip. He likes to glide around the close perimeter and push towards the middle of the ice with his inside edge against momentum to gain the slot and make defenders miss on their check. Then he transitioned to a very wide base stance to navigate the traffic protecting the puck. So while he's not the fastest player out there, he's still a very capable skater capable to use other elements within his skating to make it work. I believe that a weakness in his game is that he doesn't seem to use his teammates enough, especially for a player that can't push the pace that much or can't use speed to create space for himself, but if I had to ask myself why is that, 
I'd say it's because he's definitely miles above everyone else. And I don't mean it like he's a selfish player at all, just that he defi he's definitely playing at a level where he doesn't belong, and he's probably trying to push the limit to what he can do. Outside of that little tidbit, he's also a very intelligent player on the ice, and as weird as it may seem when talking about a Russian offensive dynamo, that applies to the defensive part of the game also. He's very very good at cutting passing lanes and routes in the neutral zone, he always seemed to appear exactly where the puck carrier was going to strip the puck away and move the puck in the offensive zone. Offensively, he has incredible awareness and vision, the amount of no look pass or back to the play backhand pass right on tape I've seen him do since the last season is just ridiculous he sees everything and anticipates everything he meshes really well chaos with intentions he's just as good at making plays out of nowhere using his pure skills as much as he can make things happen at the same level by just reading the eyes and make everyone miss on his intentions he's basically always the smartest player on the ice but I sure would have loved to see how it translate to higher levels like the VHL or the KHL to see if he can make the same reads and the same plays with less time and against much better competition. To me, there's no questions about it, he has the best set of hands in the draft and I'm not sure anyone is really that close to him. He does tend to overhandle a bit but he always end up with the puck on his stick on the other side. Like I said previously, I feel like he's just trying to push and see how far he can push it and still come out on top, which is basically all he can do to get better while he's stuck at the MHL level. A lot of people often say to let the players dominate in juniors before bringing them up. Well, that's basically what he's doing right now, he's just doing it two years before most players do. But the way he can work in traffic with his take and link and get the puck to teammates or keep it for a chance in close is at an elite level, maybe even elite plus like a 9.5 grade. He attacks defender directly putting the pucks under their stick or through their legs and jump to the next one. He can attack layers after layers and still come out on top but even though his take and link is very like very flashy and an, in an integral part of who he is as a player. He's not just a run and gun player. He's fantastic at cutting to the middle and protect the puck with his handling, baiting poke checks and moving the puck around them and exploiting the space. He's also one of the best salesmen in the draft. There's no way a defender knows where the play is going by reading his shoulders or his hips or his stick. He's always sending misdirections and fakes combining his stick and his eyes. He's just a fantastic handler in every single way. Like, even the simple offensive give and goes with, Dem with Demidov isn't a simple, normal give and go. He moves the puck through players, sells a shot or a pass to the middle with every fibers of his body, only to send the puck to a player on the outside and then drive to the little slot for an A1 scoring opportunity. He's not only very skillful, he's also as smart as it gets when it comes to using his best skills. One of the things that I'm impressed by with Demidov is how hard he works in all three zones and how consistent he is with his work rate. In the defensive zone, he works to get to the, to the puck first and puts himself in passing lane. He isn't always waiting at the blue line like, you know, some other players. On the forecheck, he tracks the players and hunt them down. I don't think he's really that good at it, but he works hard at it and really tries to get the puck back. The rest can just be coached. On dumps, he will go to the puck himself, he's not waiting for anyone to do the work for him, he goes deep, gets the puck, move it or escape coverage and make a play from behind the net. In the offensive zone, he's the furthest thing from a perimeter player, he's always, he always cuts in the middle or drive through traffic on entry, obviously sometimes he finds himself on the outside but all his plays and intentions are to make plays to or from the middle. On the board, he uses skills and strength to win battles for the puck, most of, time, most of the time winning set battles, even against 20 year olds. Uh, he's very good at keeping play alive in the offensive zone, preventing pucks from being cleared by cutting at the board or forechecking deep and aggressively. And he might not be the biggest player at 5'11 and 168 pounds, but he's more than willing to lay some big hits, even sometimes some dangerous hits. I wouldn't want to pivot and get the puck deep on a dump with Demidov locking, it, locking on me, something that is pretty rare from junior players of that stature. In the end, he's just a competitor through and through and plays to win. I wouldn't say he's on Benson levels or maybe Nick Robertson level in his draft year, but he gets the most of his body by hustling and competing hard every shift. 
It's funny because last season I saw him more as a shooter than a playmaker, but I have completely turned around after this season. Even though it's obvious he's a dual threat and he's more than capable to create chances for himself, he's an outstanding passer and an outstanding space creator. It looks just so easy for him to play on the edge and attract double cov coverage, baiting players and sending the puck into that pocket of space. Some players try to do that, but they don't have the quick hands to prevent the stick from making them lose possession, or they don't have the edges to push away attracting players out of their position. With Demidov, it's just flawless. The guy intentionally slows down and wait to get two, sometimes even three players on him to send the puck through the smallest of gaps in a giant pocket of free ice. The speed at which he can read players' intentions and adapt his touches is incredible in my opinion, and the plays he can make under intentionally heavy pressure are at an elite level. But it's not just the reads and how we adapt, it's the puck skills themselves. The seam passes across the ice are always on tape and hard to deflect. One touch passes are accurate with just the right amount of power behind it. Passes through traffic, under stick and between multiple sets of legs are just as accurate as it gets. Back end passes are crazy, no look passes are crazy, passes into space are crazy. So <laughs> just crazy passes all over the place. So look, the guy is amazing. So let's just go through my notes of, and see what it would look like after just a couple of games when he came back from injury. And you will see there's a team that keeps coming back. Note number one, amazing passer in two space. Second, crazy vision. Third, this guy has eyes all around. It's crazy. <laughs> Four, fits the puck through the tiniest holes. 5. Crazy puck skills. 6. Crazy inside edge. Looks like Makar <laughs> pushing off his inside edge on the blue line. Okay, let's not get carried away. 7. Jesus. Gotta be the craziest set of hands in the draft, with many time marks on this one. 8. The guy just liberated half the offensive zone, attracting the whole team on himself. 9. Haha. <laughs> crazy switch. Crazy angle switch. 10. Always the easiest target on the ice. And it just goes on and on and on and on. I promise my notes are usually a lot more de detailed than that, but the craziest part about his game keeps coming back shift after shift. I didn't need to detail plays or detail shift to keep in mind the, the flashes of what he can do. It's always present with him when you watch him play on the ice. Like I said previously, I don't think the shot itself is all that great. It's a good shot for sure, it's precise with some good velocity on it, but it isn't necessarily heavy or powerful. Maybe his one timer is heavier than average though, but that's about it. One thing that's really really good though is the release. He's fast, he does not need space like at all, and he can basically create a dangerous shot out of any puck. I saw him receive the puck on his, with his arm completely extended on the exterior side of a closed defender just to smoothly toe drag it completely around the player and release a laser top shelf. He has some serious lateral movement on his shot, he changes the angle extremely quick and without notice. Every time he's coming down the wing from the neutral zone and has nothing, he always dragged that shot to the interior using the defender for a better angle instead of just trying to shoot it with no angle. He is also very good at reading the ice without the puck and finding ways to get open. After each passes he dishes out, he's always working to get open like right away. He's never passive. He's always moving into soft eyes or always trying to cut to the middle with the puck to shoot, always repositioning himself to the low slot for backdoor plays, always presenting himself as a pass option for players behind the net, always converging to the net for rebounds, he's not a passenger, he's a big time driver, always trying to make things happen and be the easiest target once the puck isn't on his stick. In the end, I think Demidov has a sky high potential as a dual threat point producing machine that will work hard and be effective in all three zones. I have him second in my ranking and I don't think he's moving out of there like at all. <laughs> he's so incredibly skilled and incredibly smart while playing with a competitive edge that he has everything to become a star forward in the NHL. I would be lying if I said I expect him to become a top 6 winger in the NHL. Honestly, I expect more. He plays like those players you watch and you think are going to become stars. So I think a point per game, 35 goals, 45 assists type of player is what I think is realistic as a ceiling. Obviously, those are not expectations. Expectations are always a little more reserved, but I'd bet on him reaching close to his ceiling. He's just that good. He's by far the player I want my Habs to draft the most out of the realistic outcomes. I'd be so happy and excited, but I doubt he makes it there anyway. 
As always, comparison are a bit hard, but I think some kind of mix between Travis Konechny and Kaprizov is how I see him develop, and that would be one hell of a player. <laughs> so that's it. There it is. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.